Welcome to God Pods, Faith Conversations from Boston College's Church in the 21st Century Center. Welcome to God Pods. I'm Karen Kiefer. Hail Mary. The greatest faith story ever told is unfolding in our hearts this Advent. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we are filled with boundless anticipation as we hold the Blessed Mother Mary in prayer while we wait just a couple more days for the imminent birth of the Christ child. Each year during the sacred season, we hear the story of a Jewish peasant girl named Mary who is called by grace to be the mother of the Messiah. But if we really listen to Mary's story, we're called into a deeper relationship with our Blessed Mother and with God. Think about it. What a faith Mary had to say yes to God when it meant risking everything. Her marriage to Joseph the carpenter, her reputation, her relationships with friends and family, and possibly her own life by stoning for perceived adultery. What fortitude, what devotion she had to surrender fully and trust in God's plan. In Luke's Gospel, Mary visits with her cousin Elizabeth, who is far from childbearing years. Yet Elizabeth's pregnant by miracle and soon to give birth to John the Baptist. Mary has traveled over a hundred miles into the hill country of Judea, probably by donkey or on foot, to reach Elizabeth and share her pregnancy news. Let's think about that journey. Mary had time to reflect on her encounter with the angel Gabriel and the realization she would conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. She was probably afraid and overwhelmed, yet she persevered. When she arrived at the house of Zechariah, Mary greets Elizabeth with joy. And in that moment, Elizabeth realizes Mary is pregnant and will be the mother of the Lord. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. This gospel passage reminds us that God has a plan, and Mary reminds us to trust with a full heart and say yes to God. The story also underlines that our faith is guided by personal decisions that are defined by actions with no guarantees for safety or security. There are many people who have said yes to God in uncertain circumstances, and some have made a great impact on our lives and our communities. In the context of our own Boston College community, I can't help but think of another Mary who gave birth to a son on a December day in 1924 in the small village of Glasdell, New York. Her son would say yes to God and join the Society of Jesus as a young man. Her name was Mary Monin and her son would become the 24th president of Boston College, J. Donald Monin. Father Monin said yes to God again when he accepted the presidency of Boston College in 1972. It wasn't his plan, but it was certainly God's will. Months before Father Monin's presidential appointment at Boston College, he stepped down as dean and academic vice president at Lemoyne College in Syracuse, New York, He was eagerly awaiting a golf vacation in Canada and taking a research sabbatical before heading back to his other calling, the classroom. Excited with possibility, Father Monin was packing up his office when he received a phone call from his brother Jesuit, Father Frank Mackin. During the phone call, Father Mackin mentioned that the trustees of Boston College wanted him to consider being a candidate for their presidency. Father Monin mentioned that he really believed his gifts were in teaching and writing rather than managing. And then Father Mackin said, where are you going on vacation? And when Father Monin told him Canada, he said he would meet him in Montreal the next morning. Father Monin understood the gravity and the urgency of the invitation, and he accepted the presidency of Boston College. It was a time of great turmoil. The university was on the brink of bankruptcy and feeling the effects of the social upheavals over war and race and poverty. There were also upheavals in the Catholic Church in the wake of the Second Vatican Council amid arguments over how Catholic universities should respond to the Council's teachings. 
Father Monin said yes to the call at great risk because he believed in the love of a provident God. He believed in his missionary devotion to the Society of Jesus. He believed in the importance of a Jesuit education for others. He believed in Boston College. 24 years later, Boston College had a $600 million endowment, 24 balanced budgets, 30 refurbished or new buildings on campus. Its undergraduate program was among the top 40 in the country. Light was shed on injustices like the atrocious murders of six Jesuit priests in El Salvador, along with their housekeeper and her daughter. And enduring partnerships and programs created by legions of dedicated men and women continue to bear fruit today. Boston College was also transformed by Father Monin's quiet grace that lived in his good works. He would lead by example and teach by leading. God always has a plan. We continue to be blessed at our university today under the dedicated and inspiring leadership of William P. Leahy, who said yes in many ways to God's promptings on what it means to be a Catholic, Jesuit, liberal arts university. May we all continue to rejoice in the abundant blessings of Boston College. Advent invites us all to say yes to God's grace. Are you open to the call? Let's live Advent. The Christ child is coming in days. For more Catholic faith resources, follow us at bc.edu backslash c21 or via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs>